Hi there. In this video, I'm going to take you on a short trip down data science lane with an eye towards Devon, our pie in the cognitive analytics sky. Devon, you may recall, is an analytical business intelligence platform. Through machine learning, it spots inefficiencies in our systems and improves customer experiences. Today, we're going to try and imagine what Devon might look like behind the scenes. To try and keep things concrete, let's refresh ourselves on some basic use cases for Devon. First, the obsessive usage checker. Devon's value add here is to offer this user a notification and upgrade options when she nears a certain threshold. Next, the pay-per-view customer, calling in at the last minute. Here we might proactively offer the user a streamlined method of payment well in advance of the event. Lastly, the regular bill pay caller. Too used to the old way of doing things, these customers might benefit from Devon helping them set up auto pay or forwarding them to the website in advance of their usual call. Of course, it's easy to imagine an AI discovering these issues, but how realistic is it to design a system with such customized machine learning? Let's throw some data and a little programming scratch pad at the problem, and you can judge for yourself. First, the data. To simulate a customer database, I've drummed up a year's worth of semi-random data in a handful of plausible categories for imaginary users. All told, we have about 600 calls to play with. This is a tiny amount by data science standards, but it should suffice for some broad strokes. All right, we have a spreadsheet, but what's actually in there? To answer that question, let's switch over to our scratch pad. First, we naturally have to import the raw data, and let's take a slightly more formatted look at it. We have some call times, some usage data, and a couple of countdown columns. Let's walk through a couple. This call from account 1145 took about 15 minutes, all told. The caller's purpose was to fix her internet because, uh, oops, she was in an outage at that time. This caller wanted to order a pay-per-view event, one that was coming up in only a few hours, and so on. Rather than looking at each call, let's try and get an overall picture through what is called a scatter matrix. Scatter matrices plot each variable against each other variable in a data set and give us an idea of how those data are correlated. Here we are. There's a lot here, but let's just gloss over a few revelations. Phone usage and internet usage are positively correlated. This makes sense, as we tend to use both our phones and our internet over the course of a billing period. Likewise, usage stats and days left in period are negatively correlated. Note the small legend in the corner. The colors of the dots map to the call's intents. Here's an easy one. As the number of days before a pay-per-view event goes down, the number of calls related to the event, shown here in light blue, goes up. Also, note the divergences in the usage graphs. People who max out their internet or phone usage are more likely to call in to add gigabytes or add minutes, respectively. Let's also take a quick look at what are called density graphs on the diagonal. These show the distribution of values for the intersecting variable. For instance, IVR times are evenly distributed, but agent times follow a pretty normal distribution. Relatively few callers are in a bona fide outage, but the number using auto pay is about 50-50. Finally, as we might expect, a majority of calls take place when usage is high, perhaps to extend limits, or when the period is ending, perhaps to pay bills. Of course, this scatter matrix doesn't prove anything. It merely gives us an idea of what we're working with. Now let's try to add some value. We'll start with a straightforward classification problem, predicting the reason a customer is calling. First, we need to separate our target, uh, intents, from our feature set. This will be our input. Of course, we also need to separate our training data, that is, data we already have, from our test data, the stuff meant to simulate real life. 
We also need some helper functions to train and evaluate our prediction models. We'll be testing our models with both the training targets, i.e. the intents the model already knows, and the testing targets, the intents the model doesn't know, and evaluating their accuracy with a set of what are called F1 scores. So what are these models? Just for fun, we're going to look at a few different ones. Logistic regression is one of the most basic classifiers. It tries to fit a curve to the data, then decide the outcome based on whether the data is above or below the curve. A support vector machine tries to draw a line through the data with the longest possible support vectors, separating it from the nearest data points. Finally, extreme gradient boosting, or XGBoost, is an ensemble learning method so-called because it chains multiple poor evaluators, usually decision trees, into a single combined evaluator. Okay, now let's run our data through each one and see how they do. We just need to initialize each model, then exercise our helper methods from earlier and deposit the results in this handy table. Great, so what did we learn? First, SVC and XGBoost did very well with our training data. The fact that logistic regression did poorly with data it already knew the answer to suggests that it's not a good choice for this problem. The test data is where the rubber meets the road, of course, and XGBoost far outperformed the other models. In fact, it was able to predict the caller's intent a whopping 95% of the time. In other words, after only an account lookup, to get the customer's stats and history, we're able to say why a customer is calling in more than 9 out of 10 cases. Not bad. One of Devon's recurring themes, however, is predicting calls before they happen. Can we predict which customers are going to call to, say, pay their bill so we can notify them in advance? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's rerun the XGBoost classifier, this time asking for probabilities on a per-account basis. Let's also style the hell out of the results so they, you know, pop. There we are. For each of our intents, we can now see a set of customers who are likely, to a certain probability anyway, to be calling for that purpose. Looks like we uh, might want to send an autopay reminder to account 1028. <laughs> But wait, it doesn't help us to know what a customer wants if we don't know when she wants it. Let's turn to a regression problem, then, and try to predict the days until call value for our accounts. First, we're going to prepare our data in the same way. We remove the target values, and we also remove the intent, since the whole idea is we don't yet know why they're calling. We also need similar helper functions for our regression models, though instead of F1 scores, which work strictly on classification problems, we'll be measuring confidence intervals for each guess. Once again, for fun, we're going to attack our problem with a few different models. First, a random forest regression, which uses a set of decision trees similar to XGBoost and tries to tune various thresholds for the best result. Extra trees, a closely related algorithm, simply searches for those same thresholds on a random basis. Finally, adaptive boosting, or AdaBoost, is another ensemble learning algorithm, but instead of simply averaging out a bunch of poor performers, it adds an additional step to boost their output. Right, let's declare our regressors and get to it. We're looking for a plot of predictions alongside the expected targets, as well as error bars to indicate our confidence in the guesses. Smaller error bars indicate a higher confidence. Wow! It's hard to see because the predictions are so strong, but the dark red dots indicate the expected targets. It looks like AdaBoost, in particular, really slayed, with 97% of targets falling within its confidence intervals. But, uh, hold on here. If we think back, time tell call was correlated with usage to an almost linear degree. Perhaps it's not fair to include usage, so let's remove those columns and try the models again. Ooh. 
Ooh, how the mighty have fallen! Our confidence intervals have gone through the roof, in some cases taking up the entire sample space, and the red dots making up our target are now plainly visible. However, it's not exactly random noise, either. Let's pull our best performer out and see how it looks by itself. Hmm. There does seem to be a pattern here, particularly in the first half where the majority of the predictions fall between 0 and 5, and where confidence intervals are still relatively small. Let's add the amount of error in each prediction to our dataset and see if we can't figure out what the model is seeing here. We're going to try plotting the data versus account number. Ah, interesting. What we find here is unintuitive. Prediction error is correlated with account number. The colors I've added encode the intent each account has used in the past. So though intent was not part of our feature set, a caller's history was still used to divine that information for certain customers. To wit, we were able to predict when the next call would be for those customers who have paid bills or extended their usage limits in the past. On the other hand, we could not predict when their internet would go down or when they might be traveling. What about pay-per-view callers? Well, this is a simple question of how we define time until next call. For these predictions, we've arbitrarily defined it as the time before a customer's billing period ends. If we were to define it as the time before, say, the Mayweather fight, we would come up with a strong prediction for pay-per-view, but weak predictions everywhere else. That wraps up the math you'll have to endure for this video. In terms of tooling, a simple and easy way to imagine this implementation is as a modular web service, one that accepts an unlimited number of, say, cognitive analytics modules, that can answer basic questions based on simple inputs. Questions such as, what is account 1128 calling about? Or, which accounts are likely to call in to pay their bills in the next two days? I hope these exercises have demonstrated feasibility, with the right data of course, for some significant Devon use cases. As we add data from other sources, the website, Twitter, sentiment analysis, demographics, just to name a few, the potential for new insights becomes almost limitless. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.